Hi, everyone. Welcome to the webinar about Hero's Journey Thresholds. I've lost count. I uh, think this is the eighth webinar we're doing. I need to go back to my list. Um, I hope all is well at your end. Love to see where you're logging in from as per usual. So have a look at the chat on the right hand side. And um, yeah, let's see who's online, where you are dialing in from. Um, it's, a, it's going to be an, an informal uh, webinar in the sense that this is the first time I'm uh, doing something about uh, thresholds. I've thought about it before, but I've never really uh, done a dedicated topic to the subject. So this is new. This is uh, the first time. And um, yeah, cut me some slack, guys. As per usual, I've got a few slides prepared, not so much uh, as, uh, as previous times in terms of visuals and videos, although I've got a few video videos. Uh, the problem uh, for those who are new to the webinars, the problem with videos is that the only videos we can play in this system are those that are preloaded to YouTube. YouTube is pretty tight, it's pretty strict on um, uh, copyright. So even when I intend to use this purely for educational purposes, they may have a problem with that. And I see we've got um, uh, about 43 people so far. That's not bad. We've got Simon, we've got Clive, Leon, Ernesto. Ernesto, where are you from? Sounds Italian. Judith, Val, Ed, Mark from Albuquerque. Hello, Mark. Welcome. And another Mark from San Diego, San Diego California. Simon in Gosford, Kobe in LA, Stephen in Sydney, Miguel in Canberra. I've got a nice uh, company here. Um, happy to see that. So as I said, it's going to be informal. If, if you want a more formal uh, printout of what we're doing today, then I recommend you pre-book the, uh, the e-book. You pre-order the e-book, which I will give you the details of later on. Now, this is primarily inspired by uh, Joseph Campbell, The Hero's Journey, uh, but much of it will be also my own findings over the years of watching movies, reading scripts, and then asking questions. That's what I usually do when something doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? And how could it have worked better? So I'm, I'm going to try to bring elements of The Hero's Journey within a, uh, within a broader perspective. Now, why, why are we doing this? What's the importance of... Um, What's the importance of thresholds? What's the importance of this particular part of the hero's journey? Um, I think it goes back to the essential experience of the audience. Um, I'm just quickly going through my slides here. Okay, so the, first of all, I think it's got to do with audience experience. Um, the, 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 the way we experience stories often has to do with the core mythological aspects of it. And if we can control those, and if we can figure out what it is that controls that experience, then that will help us in telling stories more effectively. So th I think that's, that's the first uh, most important aspect. Next, there is a diagnostic tool and and i keep saying that many of these approaches to storytelling are um are diagnostic so you don't necessarily use them while you're creating but you look at them when you rewrite when you're asking questions which parts of the story may or may not work um, and ultimately i'm going to demonstrate how you can use this in uh, in, in structural questions so if if you struggle with hero's journey Sorry, if you struggle with act structure, then the hero's journey can help you with that. And I'll go into a bit more detail on that. If you have questions, and you will have questions, just put them in the in the question uh, sidebar. It's not just chat. You can mark them as questions, and that way I will see them pop up more easily. At least that's the idea. So um, mark your comments that need a response, mark them as questions, and then I can more easily respond to them towards the end of this webinar. It should be about 45 minutes. I don't know, I've never done this before. I have not even rehearsed it. I came back from my own uh, little threshold journey yesterday. I went camping for four days with my son and a class of 11-year-olds. Uh, 
And um, I'll, I'll place that sort of experiences within the context, within the framework of the hero's journey, because I think there's a lot of um, um, thresholds going on in our lives and without us even being aware of it. So structure, how can thresholds help you in um, understanding act structure? Now, most teachers will explain that the, the first act is finished when, uh, the, when the goal is established, when the hero has a goal. And, and I agree with that. That's the, the, the dramatic tension approach to, um, to structure. Now, that it's not always equally clear. Sometimes the character has made a decision, but we don't see it yet. The, the evidence of that only appears later, when in what we call the second act, they're effectively acting upon those intentions. So that's where the hero's journey comes in to help us. We, we, will, we will use mythical imagery, we'll use metaphors, and archetypes to underscore that transition from act one into act two, from the ordinary world into the special world. Now, act one into act two is still fairly simple. It's a lot harder when we're talking about end of act two going into act three. And there you'll find um, a lot of people have different theories, uh, employ different ways of um, looking at the end of that act and beginning of the, the, the next act. Um, before we go further, I want to see if you're still all with me. You've got sound and video, because if anything happens, the best thing to do is look at your screen, bottom of your screen, there should be a reconnect button, and that should help you. If you have trouble with uh, uh, speed, if your internet connection is not the fastest, then don't worry, you can re-watch this uh, as well, we'll send you a link to the replay. And obviously, as I said, there'll be a, a, an ebook. The replay, by the way, there's two versions of the replay. If you register for this webinar, whether you show up or not, you'll get access to uh, the standard replay. And for those who buy the $9 ebook during this session, they will also get access to the premium replay. Good. So back to structure. Um, how can Hero's Journey Threshold help you with act structure? Uh, end of Act 1 is simple, End of Act 2 is a lot harder. Some people say at the end of Act 1, the, the goal is reframed, is rephrased, is, um, there's a, a recommitment to the goal, or the character finds the ultimate way of achieving the goal. Now, all those things are fairly vague, and um, you know, I've, I've, I don't find them very helpful. Whereas when we look at thresholds, everything becomes a lot clearer. And that's because thresholds and hero's journey work from the foundation of what's happening with that character in a mythological and a psychological sense. So going back to my uh, slides, that'll help us. And if you prefer to see my face, you can always uh, get the premium. There's a little bit more of that. Um, good. If I find the slides, uh, they've gone. They have, no, they're here. Uh, no, they have indeed gone. Mm, no, here we go. So yeah, audience experience, we can use the thresholds as a diagnostic element to, to test that structure and then also to, um, to understand the structure, to see where, where your act breaks lie and ultimately also your midpoint because we'll see that, that the midpoint may trigger a next uh, threshold. So three acts and two worlds. If you've studied the hero's journey, you'll know that there's an ordinary world and there's a special world. The ordinary world is where the character starts. It's the normal environment, is the characters, the, um, the main character usually interacts with. And then the special world is where the, the journey takes place. It's where the adventure happens and where a character will go through that transition. Now, three acts, two worlds, because in the final act, often the character returns to that ordinary world that will now have changed because of the change in the perspective of our main character. Um, the, the thresholds will, signif will signal to us where the transition is from that ordinary world into the special world. And those who've studied Hero's Journey are probably still with me at this point. That's pretty standard. Um, how that transition happens is something that we can learn because you can read uh, Vogler's book, 
the writer's journey. You can watch movies. Uh, there's there's many ways. And what I'd like to do is what I'd like to see is is you guys find your own way, your own way of developing your language, your visual language of transitioning from that one act into the next. I'm going to show you how successful films uh, have done that, how successful filmmakers have done that. Now, in the announcements of this webinar, I mentioned the word kinema. I mentioned the roots of cinema are in Greek, kinema, and kinema also means movement, hence the word movies. But we've forgotten how that movement works, why it works, and how you can manipulate that. I would say there are three powerful aspects to movement in uh, movies. First of all, movement is it can be very primal, and particularly the threshold journeys, the, the I'd say the third threshold, and we'll go through what they are in a minute, but the final threshold from Act 2 into Act 3 is often very primal. It's got to do with the, the flight uh, experience. So it's 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 a primal experience that where it almost feels like the character has no uh, no choice and as an audience we experience that physically our body undergoes sensations that are very similar to what the character would experience in the in the situation itself so the the primal experience of flight is what we get in our uh, in our thresholds very often and that's what makes them so powerful so the primal aspect is one the visual aspect moving you know movement you can see on the screen more easily than anything that's static a dialogue so movement is is inherently visual now if it is not used properly um, it's not going to have its its impact and what i mean by that movement on the screen should have some metaphoric uh, sense, some metaphoric uh, meaning. Let's go through the three in a little bit, little bit more detail. What types of movement can we have? Uh, look at the, the three uh, thresholds. Often there's a pursuit. Our character goes after another character or a group of characters. There can be an escape um, from a situation escape from prison, escape from another character pursuing them, often life or death, particularly towards the end of the story. And then you can have a more neutral travel where you go from A to B. Now, that's the type of travel I would not necessarily recommend in a movie. When you have, uh, when you have travel, there needs to be um, uh, some sense of meaning behind it. Now, it can be that in the story, in the logical story, the outer journey, you need to go to A to B, from A to B, and there is no pursuit and there's no escape, but there's still an underlying meaning. Visually, something we'll come back to later. Movement brings us always into a new environment, or should. In many movies, you won't find the character go back to the same uh, location again. And there's a, there's a good reason for that. It's more interesting to see changing environments and staying in the same environment so not only is it kinetic is it just it's it's fun to see things move on the screen but we also see the environment change which um, which then will also be a metaphor a reflection of what's going on inside the character and here's where i would like to uh, put a lot of emphasis movement in movies should always be metaphoric if you just have your character go from a to b because the logic of the the story re requires that there's a there's a chance that despite the fact that things are visually moving on the screen the story will feel as if it is slowing down so when you see movement on the screen the the strongest experience is that where we feel that the character is also moving on there's a there's a psychological there's a, um, an emotional reason for that movement so moving on getting unstuck uh and sometimes even a rite of passage. So the character is really going from one stage in their psychological development to the next. And that is essentially what stories are about, because stories are about change. And that's what the hero's journey is about. The hero's journey is about change. So for those who are not familiar with hero's journey, I'll show you the, um, the model as it's printed in the, in the writer's journey. That's the book by Chris Fogler. And um, he uses the, the circle with a counterclockwise journey so the the hero regresses the hero first goes back before he or she makes progress again and you'll also see we start at the top there's a descent 
downwards into the special world. And that too, uh, we see in a lot of myths, we see that in, in big movies, and I'll give an example later, later on. So the three thresholds that Joseph Campbell and uh, Chris Fogler cover in, in their studies are first of all the first threshold that brings us from that ordinary world from act two into act uh, sorry act one into act two from the ordinary world into the special world it's a crossing of the first threshold the second one is called the approach to the inmost cave some people prefer to hear the innermost cave and the, there's a bit of debate where that might be in um, in Vogler's book that's towards the ordeal towards the end of act two I personally believe that that approach really psychologically starts at the midpoint, at the midpoint reversal, for the reason that at that point the character is ready. The character realizes that some progress must be made psychologically, so they now need to prepare for that cave, for the facing death, facing the, the worst possible scenario. So there's a second threshold, the approach to the inmost cave. That's the second half of Act 2. And then ultimately there's the, the third threshold, which is called in the Vogler's book, the road back home. Interestingly, that is often the fastest threshold. And that is consistent with the fact that as you write, you need to be aware that audiences towards the end of the movie expect the momentum to pick up so that you need to gain pace. Um, so the road back home brings us from act two in act three. And structurally, this is a really uh, helpful uh, tool to see where your second act really ends. And it's not just structure, it's not just um, a factual or an architectural device. This is about emotions. This is about the character being ready to now go for what they really needed to do. That now that they've prepared for, you know, two thirds of the story or seventy five percent of the story. Now they're ready to go and face um, the the demons, uh, face the evil. Uh, end of Act Two to Act Three. Let's say something about speed. I said that um, in that third act or in the the, the third uh, threshold, the speed needs to pick up, and you'll see that the speed will increase where the first threshold is often just a, a an opening of a, of a door, stepping through a door, uh, crossing a bridge, that sort of thing. The second threshold may be a physical, longer journey to a place where the hero needs to uh, find something or get something. The third threshold is all about fast movement. It's all about um, getting to that other place really quickly. Um, I think this is a good time to have a quick break and, and watch a, um, a clip. I'm cho I've chosen the trailer for Frozen River. It's a movie that I discuss in my classes quite often. Frozen River is a small film in the sense that it was shot for only four, $400,000 um, US. I got an Oscar nomination for Melissa Leo. She may have even won for a female lead. And this film has a very significant crossing of the threshold, a literal crossing of the river, the frozen river that's in the title. And what I wanted to demonstrate with this is that um, despite the budget of the film, we still see a significant threshold. So it's got nothing to do with genres, and got nothing, nothing to do with budgets. It's nothing about Hollywood versus indie movies. Thresholds you find in every type of story and every type of movie. If the, sto the storyteller, the filmmaker, understands their mythology, understands their imagery, they will use those thresholds. So in Frozen River, you'll see the river. And interestingly, there's only that one main shot, the, the money shot when um, the main character goes across the river and still in the trailer it's extremely uh, prominently present so let's have a look it's only about uh, two minutes in total the trailer for frozen river and see if you can see those thresholds or that one threshold of the frozen river there
Melissa Leo in Frozen River and the trailer showed that moment when the uh, the car crosses the Frozen River for the very first time and um, you see the, the the danger sign there at some point and that gives us uh, an indication of the territory we're going into we're going into new unexplored uncharted dangerous territory that's both literally and uh, psychologically so it, the, the movement in the film, the movement across that river is slow. It's there's still hesitation. The the hero is not um, rushing into that special world. Sometimes that happens. It depends on the type of hero you have. You can have a reluctant hero, and, but you you can also have a, a reckless hero. And an avatar, maybe that's the type of hero um, we'll encounter there. Um, I saw. Few people are experiencing trouble with uh, their bandwidth that will result in blurry image. Uh, you can try and reconnect, but if obviously if, if your bandwidth at home is not fast enough, that may not solve the problem. Um, the replay may fix that, as that will be served not through YouTube but through Amazon, and there you can buffer. Um, Tom, I'm going to say something about uh, thr thresholds in real life in a minute. Let's see. Dimitri has a question. Uh, when you create a trailer out inciting moments, uh, thresholds, good points to include. Well, I think, Dimitri, that um, the trailer for Frozen River answers that question. I think um, this is that only that one shot, but you see it come back uh, a few times. And why, why would that be a significant, important moment to include? Because it shows a character who's changing. It shows movement. And people like that. Good. Moving forward, we've spoken about the, the speed of uh, the crossing of the thresholds. Now, there's something interesting I've noticed in two films that were made uh, relatively shortly after one another in the 1970s uh, that were hugely successful, that came out of the same bunch of filmmakers, and those Star Wars and Raiders of the Lost Ark. And what I notice in those films is that you have a dual threshold. You, the, the hero goes or leaves the ordinary world first, go to, goes to an intermediate uh, place before venturing into the special world. In Star Wars, uh, we have the cantina. In Star Wars, we see Mos Eisley, which is the, the port town where uh, uh, Luke Skywalker goes to, to prepare for the journey into deep space and already there we see the aspects of the new world we see creatures that he's never seen before and he doesn't know how to respond to them now an aspect that i di didn't prepare but I'll, I'll, I'll throw it in one of the um interesting archetypes that may appear at the threshold is the me the threshold mentor sometimes you have a, a mentor just to get the character across the threshold now in star wars it's just obi-wan who's the main mentor for luke who starts in the ordinary world gets luke across and then stays with luke for quite some time in the special world um in avatar however we have a threshold uh, mentor we have a, an ordinary world mentor we have a special uh, world mentor and we have a threshold mentor so the, the the threshold that that no man's land that zone in between the ordinary world and the special world has its own rules and prepares the hero now the other movie i was going to mention was raiders was raiders of the lost ark the raiders the most of the story the bulk of the story takes place in egypt but um Indiana uh, in the, first leaves the uh, university to go to Nepal, where Marion joins the team, and then they go to Egypt together. Now, what is it about those dual thresholds? W what I believe they do is they show how remote that special world really is. So in order to get there, you need to first go to this jumping off point. You need to go to some place that from there you can go into deep space or that that um, dangerous uh, outer territory. So dual stress, uh, thresholds will help you to give that impression, give that feeling that the hero is going to a remote place, a place they've never gone to, and it takes some travel to go there. Um, in the hero's journey, we speak about inner and outer journeys. And this is critical in when we speak about thresholds i think this is where often people forget 
uh, and think that thresholds are all about outer, they're all about visual movement. They're not. They are very much about the character being ready to go to that next uh, space. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the three journeys from this perspective. The crossing of the first threshold is about being ready to go on the adventure. It's, it's kind of accepting the change, not really knowing what's coming, not really knowing why this journey is essential, but it's about willing to go someplace and then you know see what happens there. The second threshold approach to the inmost cave is a, is a really important one. I think it's under underrated, it's underestimated. What that does is it shows the movement the hero is willing to make to go to the extreme. So at the midpoint, often the character realizes that there's a problem, they need to change, they need to change, not, not necessarily the world, and they are now willing to embark on that journey of change. And, it, and it's also preparing for the moment where they're going to lose their old identity and that's they're, preparing for death is facing your own demons we show that in movies by travel the character has to go to a place where there's an item indiana jones even starts with you know that opening um sequence with the boulder that that in itself is structured in the same way there there is the there's a treasure and once uh, indy has the treasure he's got to rush out of there but the inmost, the approach to the inmost cave is about psychologically preparing for the uh, ultimate sacrifice, which is the sacrifice of the old identity, sometimes sacrifice of life. And then the, the road back home often happens once the, that sacrifice has been made and uh, has been successful. Um, so that's where the, the speed picks up. So they're different. And in most emotionally and psychologically, they also have different functions. So the road back home, often there the hero's journey is complete. The inner journey is complete. The psychological transformation has taken place. And now there's a sense of freedom. There's this, that now we're unstuck. We can move forward with speed and agility and, and, and elegance. And, and we're going into act three. The pace is picked up. Momentum um, is... is um, very fast often at that point. So I've mentioned a couple of times, the thresholds are all about change. Just like Hero's Journey is really about characters learning how to deal with change. So uh, the thresholds, they bring us from one state to the next, from one inner state to the next, from one outer state to the next. And uh, the, the first threshold is often a descent. Now the, the metaphorical meaning of that descent is going down into our inner into our psychological uh, our, our, our irrational forces we're going into our own unconscious so it's a descent into the underworld hence the the circle the, the hero's journey uh, as i said counterclockwise descending into that special world and if you watch the imagery of great movies very often there is a visible descent um, in my classes, I show the uh, classic, the art house classic performance by Nicholas Rogue with uh, um, Mick Jagger. We see the main character literally descending into this basement where the transformation will take place. And even in Avatar, and uh, we'll have a clip from that in a minute as well. So the 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 first threshold is often a descent, irrespective of the genre. You know, you'll you'll have those journeys, and I think Deepak has a question here. Deepak says, "Are the three thresholds compulsory in a movie?" Well, you know, it's it's really up to you. As I, as I said, it's a diagnostic tool. You don't have to create a list of all the things you need to tick off when you tell your story, because I I would almost guarantee you that that's not going to work. Some people feel comfortable with that and then go for it, but it's really about um you know diagnostic tool look at your story does it work does it flow where it doesn't now see what you have and what you don't have and if there's a, is a threshold missing maybe that can help you ideally if you tell your story in integrity and you 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 are guided by your inspiration uh then you will tell the story the right way and, and it often happens that people intuitively do everything right um but that doesn't happen for professional writers over and over and over again that's why pros have these toolboxes so when things when they struggle they can go back and um, use this to see 
um, if it can help. But again, uh, it doesn't matter what sort of genre you have, you'll find these thresholds. Now you can go even deeper. You know, I'm talking about the three main thresholds, but on the sequential level and even on the scene level, you'll find that they, they keep coming back. So there, there's thresholds uh, everywhere. You can have many heroes journeys, but we won't go into that level of detail. We don't have the time for that. Um, another aspect is that we always need to be moving. Movies are about movement. But not not only do we need to have movement on the on the screen, your character needs to move forward psychologically, but also visually on the screen. There are exceptions. Think about a movie as phone booth, very static. There's a there's a psychological progression there. But very often, when when films have a, a normal budget, they will have as many locations almost as possible to show that progression there's a good discussion uh, in some of the early episodes of script notes between um, john august and craig mason they talk about that fact they, they agree that many of the, the most successful films the, the hero will never go back to the same place ever again which su supports another uh statement i will make later which is that every scene really should be a point of no return so there's people or teachers who tell you that the midpoint is a point of no return. I don't believe in that. In films, you're always moving. You're always moving forward. You cannot go back. In fact, very often the dialogue at the threshold moments underscores that. Remember The Untouchables when Malone, which is the mentor character, tells Elliot Ness, played by Kevin Costner, so Sean Connery to Kevin Costner, says... You go through this door and you walk into a, a, a lot of trouble. Are you willing to do that? And then um, he, um, yes, sir. He, of course, he's, he's ready. So always keep moving, moving forward, uh, progress physically and progress psychologically, emotionally. Now, in fact, road movies are that. They are the visualization of the heroes, the inner journey. And, and you'll see that often road movies are very strong inner journeys. Uh, you, you may argue that some of these movies have hardly any plot because the, the journey, the physical journey, the visual journey on the screen is reflecting what's going on inside the character. You'll also find that these road movies are often stop, start, stop, start. And the, the start is when they're unstuck, when they're ready to move on again. And I, I'm ready to move on and to show you another uh, little clip and to just give you an example of that hero's journey threshold on the smaller scale. I'm going to play a clip that my students have seen a million times. It's one of my favorites from uh, Toy Story 2. It is the sequence where Woody saves Wheezy. And I want you to see if you can identify the thresholds. They're not very hard, but think about the world of the the toys and the world of the adults as the two different worlds to ordinary world and a special world see if you can identify the uh, threshold journeys and the, the the effective thresholds it's only about uh, two and a half minutes here we go
And we're back. As you can tell from the slide, we're going to talk about thresholds in life in a minute. But first, let's have a quick look at that uh, video you just watched. Did you identify the thresholds? Could you tell where they were in this clip? Um, so you put it in the chat if you can. So we here, because it was such a short clip and because obviously the, the, the whole movie uh, has its own has its own big theme, um, in the on the smaller scale, the themes are not always part of that uh, of the, th the mini threshold. Although I think here, here they were. So there, there was some theme and there was a, a minor um, transformation, if you wish. Now, the uh, this ordinary world in this clip obviously was the the toy room was the, the uh, Andy's bedroom and then the toys go into the special world so that threshold is leaving the room going through the door down the stairwell and then outside is the special world and as you could see um, that there was a sense of trepidation they didn't want to be noticed there and then there was a second threshold and that's the box when the toys later say wasn't a suicide it was a rescue mission the suicide refers to death so there's a, there's a mention of death which is usually associated with the end of act two and this may sound far-fetched but it isn't it, it absolutely isn't because if you think about it, it's a kids movie early in the film we're talking about death that can only have an archetypal metaphorical meaning and it is woody selling himself for 25 cent is like the end of him um here it's a threshold being ready to face the demons and toy story 2 is about the meaning of life for the toys should woody go and you know, spend the rest of his days in a museum and, and be virtually immortal or be with kids and play so that that theme is already foreshadowed right there and then the the third threshold is the road back the on on the way back to the uh, the room the toy room but notice how that that threshold is aborted it's not finished it's not completed why is that because you always want to keep the forward momentum and you don't want to fully pay off your story until the end otherwise you need to stop and start uh, too many times i hope that all makes sense so that was a, a, a journey on the smaller scale that was a threshold journey uh, it, on the scene level. Good. Now, about thresholds in life. There are a few types of thresholds we uh, we know. Every holiday, in a sense, is a threshold. It brings us from one state, the work of the, the, the state of the working life, into a different mode, into the, the, the state of relaxation. Often people travel. People go to underscore to emphasize that they're no longer working they're going to a different place both physically and psychologically so so travel holiday travel is is often a threshold honeymoon is a massive threshold um again so to underscore there's a change in the relationship and for that we're going to travel we're going from one state to the next from one social state from one psychological state one emotional state to the next and then ultimately uh the walkabout i mentioned that uh, uh, the strongest hero's journey thresholds are those that are rites of passage and what's a walkabout for the non-australians amongst you uh, walkabout is a journey on foot undertaken by an australian aboriginal in order to live in the traditional manner it is the preparation for boyhood it is signifying it is uh, um you know it is showing that the character the person is now ready to join the world of the adults the world of the adult men so walkabout is a very powerful uh, threshold sadly and joseph campbell has spoken about this a lot our myths are failing and the the old thresholds the old rituals the, the rites of passage they're still there in many religions but they are now defunct they, they're dysfunctional they're not there at the right time and you'll see that um, we have in, in judaism we have bar mitzvah in uh, uh, christianity i'm i was raised as a catholic at age 12 i did my holy communion and it was completely useless because my life just continued as it was before i kept going to school it was the big school but hey well nothing really changed in my life whereas previously you know 2000 years ago at that age 
boys would start to take part actively in the adult life. And there, these rites of passage, these thresholds had a lot more meaning. And you, you could... <clears throat> Excuse me. You could even look at the, the lifespan of people back then was about, you know, 45, 50 years. And that threshold came at about 25 percent, which is exactly where we see it in the average film. And that may or may not be a coincidence. But look at today, if our, our lifespan is now rapidly going towards 100 where you know, well, well uh, over 80 in the uh, civilized Western world. Um, and we now need a threshold around 25. That's when kids stop studying and they, they struggle to leave home because they don't have a societal aid. There's no tool, there's no rite of passage that helps them in um, making that step and enter the, the working world. And some kids go travel. They have their own version of walkabout. They, you know, they leave the parental home and they go travel the world. And that's their own threshold journey. And very powerful and absolutely essential to find their own identity, which is exactly what happens in movies. It's exactly what happens to the heroes in films. So, um, yeah, other, other thresholds, as I said, just came back from camp with my son. Um, that, there's a threshold, you know, they, they, they've, they've, you know, grown a year older and their, their cams get bigger and they go further away, which again, you know, signifies a difference between the, the being close to home, close to the parents, to being out there, you know, uh, sleeping in a tent, leave your comfy home and bedroom behind. So a lot of thresholds in the, in the real world. And um, I, I invite you to maybe put a few in, in the chat, a few uh, real life thresholds that you can think of. Now, how do you write this in the screenplay and where do you write it in the screenplay? As I said, according to the hero's journey, you have your first threshold usually going from act two into act, uh, act one into act two. I keep getting that wrong. First threshold, crossing the first threshold, act one into act two. Second threshold comes out of the midpoint reversal, prepares for the end of act two where the ordeal sits. And then the final threshold, third threshold, brings us from the end of act two into Act three. How do you write it? It could be, as I said, it could be travel, pursuit, chase. The, the greatest movie chases are at the end of Act two. And I'll, in the ebook, I will list a, a, a great number of them and I'll go into a bit of a bit more detail in analyze them, uh, analyzing them. And one I wanted to show you uh, before we go into questions, I want to show you that threshold uh, from Avatar. I'm not going to play the full 11 minutes. Because Avatar is this epic, you know, long two and a half hour movie. The thresholds are usually proportionate. In, in, in Avatar, it takes 11 minutes to go from Act 1 into Act 2. And um, Cameron knew, knew exactly what he was doing. He put a lot of archetypal images. I'm going to show a few of those. Um, you'll, if you watch the whole sequence, that really starts with a meeting with a mentor where Jake uh, gets his mission from uh, Colonel Quaritch, played by Stephen Lang. He goes into the choppers, they go into the jungle of Pandora, and you'll see the choppers descend. You don't see them take off. You see them go down. So they descend into the jungle, and that's the, the start of the descent of Jake. And then we see a, a mix of the threshold and act two, the, the discovery of the new world. And the tests there become more and more testing and more and more dangerous, if you wish. This first is the plants, then it's the type of creature, and then uh, ultimately, there's the dangerous creature for which Jake needs to run. The, that's the Thanator. And I, I want to show you that, a, a short two-minute clip. I want you to look out for a few things. Um, as the hero travels from the ordinary world into the special world, there's no longer use for the tools of the ordinary world. And you'll see how the, the creature, the Thanator, strips Jake of the tools that have helped him in the ordinary world, but that will no longer be helpful in the special world. So let's uh, watch that film, uh, that short clip, and then we'll go into questions. Here is um, the, uh, the end of the threshold sequence.
So that was Jake in Avatar going from Act 1 into Act 2, going from the ordinary world into the special world of Pandora. And he was chased by this Thanator. First, he lost his gun and then he lost his backpack, both tools from the military tools from the ordinary world that, that no longer belong in the special world. And they're useless. They, they won't help him. As you can see, he was shooting in at the creature, but that didn't, um, didn't help him much. Um, I wanted to just quickly go back to, you know, what, what do you need to write and when do you write it? Um, as I usually recommend, you write your screenplay intuitively first and then you go back to, um, to review it and, and you use this threshold as a diagnostic tool for where you feel it may not work. I have read scripts where it was unclear where we were in the story where you know everything kind of flowed fluidly but nothing happened and um sometimes you can build tension you, if by showing that we're going into a special world with with new rules that foreshadows what may happen and it creates tension and that's what movies are often all about it's about um, building tension um good i think we're ready for the questions let's have a look or rather, before we go into the questions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the, show you the, um, yeah, the, as you can see in the right hand bar now, you can pre order the, the ebook about thresholds as well as a, uh, a checklist and the replay of this webinar in glorious high definition if uh, the recording works, which usually uh, it does. So when you subscribe, by the way, for the, uh, to the next webinars, you have the option to subscribe to all. So you don't need to do it over and over again, and um, you won't miss any. Uh, and it cost, doesn't cost you anything. So why, why uh, shouldn't you? The next webinar is on uh, the 4th of June. I think that's in four weeks' time. It's about subtext. It's about my system of subtext. I will talk about what I call dramatic subtext and thematic subtext. Um, I would like you guys to email me. Email me your um, your ideas for upcoming webinars. Um, feedback, I will, I will email you with the link to um, the feedback for this particular webinar so I can make them better. Um, good, the questions. Where okay, are they? I saw them just then and now they're gone. Uh, hang on. Okay, there we go. Uh, I may have to go to this screen there we go um does every threshold have a guardian that's a question by deepak yes i didn't mention the the threshold guardians um you know threshold guardians are an archetype it's whatever keeps your hero from progressing what it also shows that this is it this is difficult stuff it's something they they haven't done before it's in the same way we want the refusal of the call to show that the call to adventure or the inciting incident is a big one. In the same way, we want threshold guardians to show that this is an important step for the character. So, yeah, good question, uh, Deepak. I think uh, guardians help in uh, showing in an archetypal way, in a visual way, that this is a big step. So, yes, do, do use the threshold guardians. Um, Simon says, uh, yeah, like Platoon, where the soldiers st stripped off pack contents. We saw that in, in Avatar. We saw that also in um, in uh, Saving Private Ryan, the Jeremy Davis character, who's essentially the hero character in Saving Private Ryan. He's the one who makes the greatest change. We see him being stripped off his typewriter uh, before he ventures into the journey. And that that is, for him, that is a threshold. He loses his typewriter and he gets, from Tom Hanks, he gets the pen. Um, Julia says, shift in relationship when elderly parents become dependent on you. That's a threshold, absolutely. Miguel says, having my first child was huge for me. Birth and death, says Nina. Uh, Steven says, real life thresholds examples are career change, parenthood, retirement, grandparenthood. Um, have you noticed how often we have we have the need or the, the the urge to go travel when we have to make important decisions and travel often helps us or when we put off big decisions we go travel first. Um, good. I th oh, here's Martin. Martin, does a hero have to make a decision changing his or her life irreversibly when crossing each threshold? 
Now, nothing is compulsory in screenwriting. You know, you you write your story, and you will know best what sort of story it is and what sort of thresholds your hero goes through. Sometimes they have to make decisions. Sometimes they're pushed uh, across a threshold. In Pixar's um, Ratatouille, the rat ends up down the drain, doesn't choose to go down the drain all the way to Paris. So it's not a conscious decision. Uh, so the, the threshold sometimes forces them to make that decision. Um, Kobe asks, are you saying Marion's bar and the cantina are the first of the thresholds? Yes, absolutely. That's the, the it's, it's where the, the, the journey um, starts. In fact, it's, it's a threshold in two stages. Um, so let, let's be clear about that. So Marion's bar in Nepal is part of the first threshold. Okay, they, they, they are not the first threshold. It's not like the then the travel to Egypt is the second threshold. No, this is all part of that first threshold. The first threshold gets us from the ordinary world into the special world. And sometimes these worlds are so far remote that it takes um, a lot of travel. Intermediate threshold sounds like purgatory, says Tom. Absolutely. Yeah, that is, that's, it's a type of um, purgatory the character needs to go through, preparing for the real ordeal. Matt asks, who is the avatar threshold guide? And I think Dimitri has already that, uh, answered that. I, I saw someone answer that. It was indeed Grace, played by Sigourney Weaver. Um, trailer, yes. I think we've covered them all, have I? If I haven't, then please. Oh, here we go, Judith. In Avatar, what psychological journey does he take? Great question, Judith. Avatar is not a, a simple film to analyze. The reason being, Cameron developed it over nine years. He wanted to cram so much into it. It was a very long screenplay. Um, he famously said after he'd written that, that um, he said he gave every, everyone at Fox permission to shoot him in the head if he would ever de deliver a screenplay longer than 110 minutes, or 110 pages, rather, because he was trying to, to fit too much in. Um, the psychological journey, I believe, is that Jake doesn't need his legs back. He realized that he's got everything he needs. So the, the, it's a you know very Eastern philosophical approach to happiness. It's you know accepting that what you have is enough to be happy. He he, he goes on this mission to get his his legs back. But then when he goes uh, running as the avatar, he realizes that nothing will ever be as good as, as this. So he's got enough to be happy. Louise asks, does the threshold guardian have to be a person? It's a question that comes back in many forms uh, quite often, uh, Louise. And thank you. It's a good question. In the hero's journey, the question, the, the bigger question is, should every archetype be a person? And I would say... Yes, ideally they should be anthropomorphic because that's what stories do. Stories visualize ideas, they visualize abstract notions, they visualize emotions that we have and so we can project them onto characters and then you have conflict and you have story. Do you have to? Is it absolutely com compulsory? No, but it's easier to tell stories. All right, so if you have further questions, just email them to me and I may address them in the ebook. Um, the ebook, uh, the pre sale offer is now in the right hand sidebar. And I invite you, it's only $9. It is extremely good value. People who have bought these for $9 before can, um, can confirm that. It will go up uh, to $39 as soon as I deliver it. That's, that's how the system works. If you go to the shop, and I'll, I'll send you the link for those people who are new. These ebooks go up in price after a couple of weeks, but if you're on the webinar and you buy before I deliver them, you get them at $9. That's the deal. Please send me some ideas for future webinars. I'll, this is for you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying these webinars, but essentially I'm doing them for you. So how can I help you in your writing, in your uh, storytelling? Um, and you ask and we'll play. At least we'll try that. Next webinar is on the 4th of June. I hope you'll be there again. And um, for now, thank you for, for showing up and um, hope to see you then.